Driving around Circleville today would be much like driving around Round Town in the late 1970s. Nothing changes much. In fact, the population continues to go down. There would be one major change, though. Back then, there were the letters. The Circleville letters. And a lot of it was uh, vindictive in tone. I mean, nasty in tone. Uh, there was sexually oriented material or accusations uh, of vulgar is the only way you know to really describe them. The letters were often threatening missives sent to people in Pickaway County. We're not talking about a couple or hundreds, but thousands of letters. They all had the same block lettering and they would target politicians and leaders, but also just plain folks who had nothing to do with the running of Circleville at all. William Harsha is a 4th District State Judge who was a prosecutor during some of the time of the letters. He received his share. Harsha says the main suspect of the letters was Paul Freshour, who lived in Grove City. Freshour was later convicted of booby-trapping a mailbox belonging to an ex-sister-in-law. That sister-in-law was a school bus driver who the letters would claim was having an affair with a school official. In fact, the sister-in-law, the bus driver, had a husband who died under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Freshour was convicted of attempted murder in the failed booby trap, which included a gun that belonged to him, but he claimed had been lost or stolen. All of the he said, she said, they said of the 1970s and 80s gossip mill got mixed into Fresh Hour's trial, and it was generally believed he was the writer. We were unable to reach him for this story, but we're told would be unwilling to do an interview with us. After his conviction, something else happened. While in prison, the letters, in what looked like the same handwriting, continued. Department of Corrections put Paul Freshour in isolation. They restricted his access to writing materials. They checked his mail. Uh, and they insisted that there was no way he was sending these letters, but they continued. That's part of the story no one has an answer to. It went on after Mr. Freshour is in prison. And the focus of the uh, concern was, well, if he's doing this, how could he be getting letters out of prison? How, how could he be responsible in a secure facility, and this happened. The sheriff of Pickaway County, Dwight Radcliffe, is convinced Fresh Hour was the man and guilty of both the attempted murder, of which he was convicted, and of being the letter writer, that he was somehow getting them out of the prison. Martin Yant, a former dispatch writer and now a private investigator, has spent a lot of time on this case and feels much differently. It doesn't seem to fit the profile of the writer, the writer seemed to be very involved in Pickaway County politics. Paul Freshour wasn't even from Pickaway County. He's a real gentle, soft-spoken guy. I think he was framed. Yant also received his share of letters in one the writer says about Paul Freshour, who was at that time in prison. See what he got? He will not get out of prison, or Radcliffe, meaning Sheriff Dwight Radcliffe, will take his place. The writer also says... The signs and letters will not stop. Whatever happened, the letters continued off and on with less frequency into the 1990s. Then, like it never happened, the letters stopped. And Circleville carried on like nothing had ever happened. In Circleville, I'm Mike Bowersock, NBC4.